In this tutorial, I want to create this really nice uh, vertical navigation menu uh, example right here. And there's a lot of great examples of images that you can use to create vertical navigation menus and on other pages, horizontal navigation menus over at explodingboy.com. So a lot of nice stuff there. So I, I got the image for that particular navigation menu, this orange and blue one. Here we go. Now each individual link is using the exact same image and you can see the image is right here. This is not two images, this is simply one image with two various states. The key to that navigation menu working is that this image is going to be used as a background image and we'll just simply be repositioning the background image based on the current state versus the hover state of the link. So this is the image I'm going to be using. I've already saved it to uh, my local computer from the web and I've got uh, Dreamweaver open to a blank page. Now to start off, this is kind of the weird thing here, in order to create this navigation menu, I'm going to use just an unordered list. And this is used quite frequently in the web. Uh, so let me jump over to uh, apple.com for a minute, just as, a, just as emphasis for this particular skill. Okay, this is Apple.com's website, and uh, they have a horizontal navigation menu across the top using the same technique that uh, we're about to use in this video. So let me go ahead and look at their source code. And here it is. So this is the source code for their navigation menu. Notice it is simply an unordered list. They've given it a unique ID and then they have list items. And of course each list item is simply uh, contains a hyperlink. Notice each of their list items also has a unique ID. So there's a link for the Apple Store, the Store, I'm sorry, Apple, the Store, Mac, iPod Tunes, iPhone. And this is simply what we have up here the home page, the store, Mac, iPod, iTunes, iPhone. So using an unordered list in CSS you can make these nice looking navigation menus of course especially if you have the background image. They're using a two-stage background image as well. Alright so back to our demo. So I'm over here in Dreamweaver and I'm going to go ahead and create an unordered list. I'll go ahead and jump over to text and unordered list and I'll just go ahead and put in some items. I'll put in home, contact, catalog, and sitemap. So now I have an unordered list. Using my tag selector I'm going to go ahead and click on my UL tag. I'm going to give it an ID. I'll go ahead and call it my main menu. And it is actually not necessary in our example to give each of these an unordered list. I'm sorry, to give each of these list items their own ID. We saw it in Apple's website and in some situations it is, but it's really not necessary in this one. So I'm not going to uniquely identify my individual list items, even though sometimes you, you will. So now that I've got that taken care of, the rest of my work, the bulk of it really, is going to be done in my styles panel. And just for now, I think what I'm going to do, just so we have a reference of it, I will go ahead and insert my image, just so we can see that I'm, what I'm going to be working with. So I'll jump over to my Common tab, insert an image, and the image I'm going to be using is actually saved in an Images subfolder. There it is, Menu 9. Uh, yes, and I also, let's see, I need save that. I didn't actually save my web page first so and I'll just put in menu image. There we go. So this is the image I'm going to be working with in order to create this navigation menu. I'm going to go ahead and create a style sheet. I'll simply click on file new. I'm going to do a blank page, CSS, and create. There's my style sheet. I'll go ahead and take a moment to save this. I'll call it uh, verticalmenu.css and then back on my HTML file I'll go ahead and attach that CSS file. So using my CSS panel I'll attach my style sheet, I'll browse for it. There it is. I'll link it. Media really isn't too important here but I'll go ahead and choose Media All even though that's the default and click OK. So now I have a style sheet. And to start off, I'm going to go ahead and start to create some rules. And 
I'll start off generally with what I have. I happen to have, I'll, okay, now I'm going to create a new CSS rule. I'm going to go ahead and click once on this and ensure that my unordered list main menu is active. And then I'll jump over and create a new CSS rule. What I actually want to do is a compound based on my selection. Didn't really get it all for me, but, and this truly isn't necessary. But I'll just, as a reminder in my rule, that this is my main menu, which is an unordered list. UL, pound sign, main menu, uh, no spaces. And I'll click OK. And now I certainly have the properties for those things. Now, this is an unordered list. So I have to kind of think, how do I want this to look? I don't want it to really look like a bulleted list, but I want it to have some characteristics um, of a list. One of the things I'll do is I'll go to the list category, and for list style type, I'll choose none. And then if I apply that, you'll see that my bullets disappear. Something else I'd like to do is I'd like the width of my the width of my unordered list to be equivalent to the width of my image. Now, I don't remember what the width of my image is, so I'll simply click OK here, click on my image, and I can see that it's 200 pixels wide by 64 pixels tall. Later on, we're going to need to know this height. Um, the orange segment, obviously half of that will be 32, and the blue segment will be 32, but 200 pixels wide. So I can go back to this rule and edit it, and now I can specify that my image, or I'm sorry, my uh, unordered list is 200 pixels tall. I'm not going to put in the height, though. For now, I'm also going to put in a thin border. This is uh, it's something I'll get rid of soon, but I just want to have a border in there just for the start. So I'll go ahead and put in a solid one pixel thick red border. So now I can kind of get a, a little bit of a visual there.